Space go, space go, space go, coast to coast. New Mexico has long been the home to wildly inventive technology. When America was embroiled in World War II, New Mexico helped develop and test the technology to close that horrific period. When America needed to ensure Apollo astronauts could safely be returned to Earth if a launch abort occurred, Little Joe 2 testing at White Sands Missile Range proved a flawless system. There are a lot of wild space things in New Mexico. Space Goat takes us to the top five. Number, Number five, five, Atomic Annie. Nuclear power is powering probes in space, such as New Horizons that photographed Pluto in 2015. Nuclear weapons in space is a contentious topic. One early such weapon, which never really took off, was nuclear ground-based, the M65 atomic cannon, and one is on display in New Mexico. America was embroiled on two fronts during World War II. Germany surrendered in May 1945. Japan did likewise three months later after two atomic bombs were dropped there. With atomic might achieved, the American government tasked the military with creating an atomic gun to lob nuclear shells at the enemy. In 1953, the public got a first look when an M65 was towed in Dwight Eisenhower's presidential inaugural parade. Four months later, the cannon was tested at the Nevada test site projecting a shell seven miles. One test, but enough to prove the worth, and the government ordered cannons built. They were shipped to Korea, never to be fired in battle, but kept in America's arsenal for the next decade. You can see one, more colloquially known as Atomic Annie, at the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History in Albuquerque. Number four, the Rio Grande Gorge at Taos. One of the Apollo mission's main goals was to bring home rocks. But how does one know what rock to pick up and what to ignore? Step one, hire a geologist. That was New Mexico's Dr. Harrison Jack Schmidt, who would walk on the moon during Apollo 17. Step two, find rocks. New Mexico is rife with a diversity of geology such as igneous and basalt. Both are found on Earth and the moon. The astronauts took field trips to learn to identify rocks. Neil Armstrong trained at Philmont Scout Ranch, where he'd once attended as a boy. Apollo 15 trained at Taos Gorge. There, astronauts drove a training rover and practiced taking core samples. Oh, and learned to spot the rocks worth bringing home. Number three, the Grain Bin Dome at Sunspot. The National Solar Observatory opened at the peak of the Sacramento Mountains in 1947. More commonly known as Sunspot, the first instrument was a coronagraph used to view the sun's corona, although a building had yet to be erected. Two years later, the first observatory, this grain bin dome from Sears, went up. The story is the Air Force hauled the package up the mountain, assembled it, and the telescope was placed inside. Number two. The Lunar Module at White Sands Test Facility. What goes down must go up. When America was planning to land men on the moon, descent and ascent engines on the Lunar Module had to be tested. That was done with this model at NASA's White Sands Test Facility in Oregon, adjacent to Las Cruces. Today, it rests in a warehouse on the property. Still a testing site, the facility is inaccessible to the public. Number one, the Air Force Cloudcroft Observatory. The observatory sets just off State Route 244, adjacent to Cloudcroft. Although the facility has seen many subsequent purposes, the Air Force opened the observatory in 1964 to track space vehicles. The Soviet Union's Sputnik launch, which portended spy satellites, meant the United States needed to spy on the spies. Once the dome was opened 180 degrees, the 48-inch telescope inside could track a satellite horizon to horizon. In addition, a high-powered laser could also illuminate the satellite. Thanks, Space Goat, for another fun-filled tour of space-related locations around the land of enchantment. Space Goat will return for another foray. Till then, be sure to follow us and like us on Facebook 
and YouTube.